Uh, hi, Bob here. 26th of January. I'm about ready to publish the uh, uh, scales uh, vids. There's two of them. Two, not, not four, two. And uh, they're introductory. Uh, they came about, these were issues that came up as I was uh, studying uh, basically introductory guitar courses. Now, I'm not really an, uh, a beginner beginner, uh, but I haven't uh, played pop music uh, before to any extent, so I was watching vids and uh, this is the stuff that came up. It's going to show uh, basically visuals that uh, I think would help with uh, learning scales and learning. The whole series is beginner oriented. This is the imagery I've come up with so far to understand scales. Everything is on a single screen to give an overview. And there's a lot of zooming in for details. I doubt if there are too many people who have uh, spent more time and gotten less music from scales than I have. But I was always more interested in the understanding than in the playing. And I'm more of an illustrator here than anything else. Okay, I have seen sound listed as going from about 7 cycles per second to about 200,000 cycles per second. And we're interested, of course, in what we can hear. It goes 20 to 20,000. Now, the range of musical instruments is covered pretty well by the piano. goes up to about 4186 cycles per second. And I'll give you an idea what that's about. Uh, everything over that is overtones, uh, clarity of the sound. So here's my hearing tested back in 1999. It's about 50 years old. And about two years ago, uh, about 70 years old, uh, there it is. Uh, you drop off significantly and starts right after childhood. Uh, this, by the way, is more or less typical of my age group. Uh, I don't need hearing aids, and I can hear, but uh, not as well as I could when I was younger, for sure. I arranged the piano, covered in a little bit more than uh, seven octaves, and that covers your, your range of hearing over, uh, over a lifetime. Uh, the white keys are all in the key of C major. The first question is, why don't we start with A major and have those as the white keys? And the answer is it's more history than logic. The scales came after modes, and C just happened to look out. It just happened to, just happened to be in the right spot. At least that is what I've read so far. You can probably look it up yourself and know more than I do. And the next question, of course, is why are there 12 frequencies in an octave? This is in a Western scale, or the piano. And the answer is 12 perfect fifths matches seven octaves, the seven octaves of the, of the piano scale. Not precisely, but close enough. Each of those 12 perfect fifths are tempered, meaning they are made slightly smaller, and then they were brought back into a single octave by dividing the frequency by half in succession until you get into a single octave. So that is why you've got uh, 12 keys per octave on the piano and 12 frets per octave on the guitar. Each key on the piano, when you include the black keys, is separated by a half tone or semitone. That's 2 to the 1 12th. And then you make the major scale out of that. And I'll show you how that's done next. And here again is the two diatonic intervals, the whole tone and the half tone. And again, you can see that the interval ratio, the 2 to the 2 12ths or 2 to the 1 12ths, multiplied by the lower number equals the higher number. Okay, I'm thinking uh, La Scala. Scala is Italian for ladder, so scale, uh, a ladder, something like a ladder. You put the scale patterns vertical, and then think of climbing up and down the frequencies or notes as if they were rungs of a ladder. The idea is you start with equally spaced halftone intervals, then remove some of those notes to make the climb more interesting. Uh, the pattern repeats every time the frequency of the keynote is doubled. That's the octave. And uh, different kinds of music have different sets of rules on how to make changes to keep it interesting. And you want to be playing the same rules as the audience expects, or be good enough so that you can uh, change the rules and get the audience to follow along with you. 
and enjoy the new set of rules that you find more interesting. In a little different look, uh, starting with the chromatic sequence of half steps. It's turned vertical like a ladder, and here's the ascending chromatic and the descending. And now you think of some of the rungs as being removed, and now there are two intervals, the half step and the whole step, in the major scale pattern. The ascending major scale and the descending major scale. And we'll do that once again. There's the chromatic scale ascending, the descending. Major scale ascending and descending. I'll put things back on their side so you can see this. Uh, here the two uh, octaves are joined and you can see that the keynote is the C. And here's the frequencies and you can see that they are doubled every time you reach the keynote. So the way I'm looking at it, the eighth note of the lower octave is the first note of the upper octave, and it's just sort of a continuum. Technically, it's a C and the same note as the fundamental, so only seven notes in an octave. And now the classical guitar I use here has 44 unique frequencies, 72 duplicate frequencies. That's a total of 116 frequencies. It's about three and a half octaves. Steel and uh, electric a little bit more. So I'll show you how I got that number. Uh, you start out with the uh, low E string, and there's 19 frets plus the open string. That gives you 20 notes. And then within the range of a single hand, you have to be able to play all these notes. So within four or five frets there, you have another 24 notes, and that gives you 44 unique notes, and everything else is duplicate. Now the math is the same for voice in all instruments. The interval or distance between two notes is the ratio of the higher frequency divided by the lower frequency. The natural intervals are the harmonic series, uh, 1, 2 over 1, 3 over 2, 4 over 3, etc. As explained in more detail in the notation and number video at about 1 minute and 11 seconds. And that expresses the way physical objects vibrate and produce sound. Now both guitar and piano currently approximate the natural intervals with 12 tone uh, equal temperament. Each octave or 2 to 1 ratio is subdivided into 12 parts which sound equally spaced to us. And the 12 through the 2 is used as a common ratio between every note fixed by the keys of the piano and the frets of the guitar. The guitar uses two tones, the uh, half tone 2 to the 1 12th and uh, the whole tone 2 to the 2 12th to make the major scale, which gives us the uh, tonality or key center, a gravitation towards the key center. The seven letter names of the musical alphabet are uh, separated uh, by the C major interval formula. And once again, the higher frequency over the lower frequency equals the interval, either the whole tone or the half tone, or any other interval. And when you're listening to music, you're always trying to figure out what comes next. Uh, same with everything in life, actually. And with music, the next note is always a multiple of the previous note, usually figured out from familiar patterns uh, that is music you've heard before. And now here is a chart I've made up showing some of the uh, other intervals that are used in music. And they have different names depending on the context, what key you're in, they change. Uh, the math would stay the same. Here, let me give you a close-up uh, of the math a little bit. And then uh, I'll, I'll show you the, the entire idea. Watch the horizontal line across the top. Those, that's the frequency line. And some of these compound intervals I'm a little less sure of. I think they might refer more to it. chords than interval. Here is the format I designed for demonstrating scales on the guitar. The top section is read left to right, scale formulas are on top, the letter names for the key is in the middle, and then the frequencies of the notes are on the third line. And the advantage of showing those frequencies is that they don't change, at least not on the guitar and piano in 12 tet. The, uh, every other instrumentalist uh, changes those frequencies slightly to keep in the Pythagorean or just intonation or something close to that. So on the guitar, because they are fixed, uh, they give a reference point for everything else. Now, the guitar, you can bend them, and a lot of intonation, a lot of the quality of uh, what your music is, depends on you bending them and uh, stretching them out a little bit at the right moment, at the right timing. 
That's a skill level that uh, I'm not going to deal with here. A text box explains what doesn't fit in the uh, title bar. And the uh, notation and tablature for guitar are alongside that. I use note heads only. I don't use any stems or flags. It just helps uh, pinpoint things on a small screen. The keynotes are in red. The fretboard is uh, located below. It can be uh, switched between letter names and frequencies. You know, uh, looking thing over, reading things over, uh, it looks like solfage should should be in here. That's solfa, solfage. And uh, I'm not just not sure. I haven't studied it enough to really be sure how to do it or what how to animate it or how to visualize it. And so uh, this is here as a stopgap kind of measure temporarily. Uh, Rick Beato has a uh, good video with the talking about fixed and movable, but he got a little bit advanced for me. So I'm going to have to go back and see what I can do. And C major an octave higher on the third string. Same scale, linear pattern on the second string. Now going back down an octave and playing it across the strings like this, this is usually the way I've seen it introduced. And let me just show you how that works a little bit. You basically have six strings and the linear pattern on each is staggered. I'll show you that. Here it is. Instead of a single line of ascending pitches, the mathematical representation of the guitar looks more like a, a six-row spreadsheet with a middle C running diagonally across four or five strings. If you've got 20 frets, you've got five uh, middle Cs. And this allows a single hand to span a little over two octaves. And the interval between the strings, going from low note to high note, is perfect fourth, perfect fourth, perfect fourth, major third, Perfect fourth. So it ends up the scale patterns you play on the guitar are uh, back and forth, left and right, and and across the fretboard. Everybody else goes straight line, up and down. So now it comes to something like uh, Segovia scales. Uh, you go across and along the string, a combination of both. Uh, remember, the classical, you got audiences sitting down there, they're concentrating, they're focusing on the music. It's 500-year-old uh, uh, covers and... Uh, uh, it's all organized and stuff. Uh, the uh, fretting position on the classical guitar, it's really designed for a wider neck and a different uh, kind of music. Uh, but it's good to know. It gives you some uh, technique that would be hard to get a little later on. So it's good to practice a little bit. So go over you wanted you to do uh, two hours a day. Uh, the classical world is always more focused on that kind of thing than uh, the pop music type thing. But even in the classical world, very few people uh, agree with that anymore. Some do. Um, I used to practice about an hour a day, and then I had no time as an amateur, and then I had no time for nothing else. So it didn't work too well for me. And uh, Segovia did some great things with the guitar, but he really wanted, he was thoroughly dedicated to a, a classical uh, guitar. He wanted to make that instrument a classical instrument. And I watched him live one time at the Dorothy Chandler Pavilion there. It's uh, about 3,000 people's uh, seat there, seats there. And uh, he reached, he did what every great performer does. He reached at one point really deep inside of him and just gave everything he had. Uh, one piece. And then he continued on for another set. Very good. And now, uh, pop music, rock, what have you. Uh, usually your audience is young. They're bouncing up and down. They got a lot of energy. It's a different kind of music. Uh, still, you uh, the classical style here is good to know about, good to practice. You got to practice it. You got to put some time into it. I like David Russell's approach, he, where he does a lot of time on two or three notes. Uh, Segovia noted the uh, st what string you're playing by these uh, numbers and lines, and of course you got the number of which finger to push down on the fret on the top there. So there's a lot of note. It's like a notation on top of notation. It's a little hard to see the sequence of whole and half steps, the sequence of frequencies separated by a pattern of uh, intervals, which is the top line on this uh, diagram. But uh, that's what it is.